Hello friends. Uh, welcome to another mini course for watercolor. Today we're going to be working on gradients, a fun exercise to kind of not only help you learn to blend different colors to get lots and lots of different colors from those colors, because you know, that's a lot of saying colors. Um, but also it can help with brush control and techniques. It can also help, um, with the amount of water that you add, getting, um, control over that and the opacity of your, your paint, how, how heavy you're painting, how light you're painting. Um, but also it's just a really, um, nice and soothing way to, to just, relax and calm down um, if you're having one of those days where it's just uh, not going right. So um, I'm using my uh, Winsor & Newton palette today and we're just going to start with some some primaries right because that's that's pretty much what we blend anyway. So we're going to start with primaries. I've got uh, just a, a little five by seven sheet of paper that I'm working with. You can do this on a piece of paper or you can um, do it in a book. Uh, you can get, excuse me, an A4 or A5 sized um, watercolor booklet. Uh, I got, I'm pretty sure I got this one from Amazon. So you just find the right um, press of paper. I think that one's cold press and it's 140 pounds. Um, then I also have with me some, obviously some water. Um, because we're doing watercolors. I've got a little um, flat brush. This is a, a one quarter flat uh, and I am a super big fan of these brushes. They are creative mark, creative inspiration brushes. Um, I really like how they handle. It's, uh, it is uh, synthetic so they're, uh, they're just really nice brushes. I like them. And then I also have a uh, porcelain trays here I you can totally if you're a fan of mixing on your um on your palette tray go for it um as you can see I do do that but I am really a fan of uh mixing on porcelain it just it sits different um the paint and the water sit different on the porcelain as opposed to the the tr the aluminum or the tin tray and I'll kind of um I can show you the difference while we're while we're doing this. All right, so and then just a paper towel, and we can get started. So uh, to start, I guess I'll show you on the tin first. I'm gonna pick um, just one blue, so we'll go with ultra blue because that's typically the one that um, is closest to the primary color. So we'll just get this nice and. Get it into a certain, like the coffee, if you've taken my Back to Basics class, a coffee mix um, that just refers to the consistency of it. See how it kind of moves, but it goes back into place. Um, that's kind of like the, that's how tin operates. Um, and then uh, we'll do, I'm a big fan of purple, so let's do purple. Um, so I'm going to choose the Alizarian Crimson for my second color. And we'll just put that guy here. And I'm separating them because I really want to have space to um, create a bunch, and I do mean a bunch, of different colors um, on my palette. So I want them separated. Um, on my paper, I'm going to choose to like make a little box over here of my um, my primary colors that I'm working with so that I can label them. Um, so you can just, you can draw this out if you want beforehand, or you can just wing it. It's really up to you. However uh, much thought you want to put into it, how much time you want to put into it. So we'll put our blue over here and just make a nice little box. Okay. So that gets us started. We've got our, um, Alizarian Crimson Red over here, and we've got our Ultramarine Blue over here. So then what we're going to do is we're going to just start mixing the two together, and each time we mix, 
um, we're gonna have a little bit different color. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of this red and just a little bit blue and just gonna pull that down there. Now if I kind of squeegee it out, it's gonna make a lighter one. See how they're different? And when they dry, um, they look a lot different. So we'll just pull some more blue in here. And go ahead and there's a new color. Come over here and play with the red some more. And there's a new color. Maybe grab some more, just more of that together. And you're literally just going through and making a whole bunch of colors. You can add more water, right? And that'll kind of make different colors. And if you make the same color twice, which I didn't, but um, you can always go over it again. That adds, um, or even add some color and go over it again, right? Because we can blend wet on wet. And that's what we just did there. So we'll, let's see, we'll add some more blue. Let's see what we got there. Maybe go back over to this red and blend it more in. Oh, there's a nice dark purple. We literally just are going to do this until we get to the other side, or we can continue to do it um, down through the whole paper if you want, because there's like, there's no stopping. There, there's just a million different color combinations that you can make doing this, but it also is helping, see how it's helping me learn to know how much water I need for each thing um, and how less water makes lighter colors, more water, or I'm sorry, less water makes darker colors and uh, more water makes lighter colors. <coughs> so it's just kind of a fun, fun exercise to play with and there I've kind of reached the end but like I said you could you could literally keep going for days so that's what it looks like on the tin I'm gonna go ahead and pull over uh, one of my ceramic dishes here and I'm gonna pick um, we'll, we'll use the ultra blue again we'll make a puddle in here see how it kind of acts a little bit different it doesn't pull in as much it is slower almost than this is I don't know if you can tell but it for me it it's it, it's different there's just a different feel when I'm putting it on there there's a different feel when I'm trying to move it around in here so I'm kind of a fan of of it but totally totally your preference I have a little bit of extra water on my on my paper if you saw me I was kind of trying to move it off there but it's gonna make my blue a little lighter than I'd like but that's okay we'll just go back over here and add some add some pigment without as much water all right and this time I'm gonna go and I'm gonna dip into the cadmium yellow and we're gonna use that as our other puddle put him over here and it doesn't really matter where you start right um you don't have to start with a blue on this side and go gra gra gradually to a yellow um, which would obviously be a green um, you just dive in and play see what it looks like and kind of eh, that's a little bit different Mine isn't very straight this time around, um, but if you decide to go through and actually put lines in, and I'll show you some of the completed ones that I have that have the lines, so you can kind of see what that structure looks like if you want it to look more, uh, yeah, more structured uh, instead of just kind of like all over the place. 
it, kind of putting it in boxes helps um, with that um, with that brush control, right? Because right now, like, I'm kind of just all over the place. But if I did it in uh, strips, I would know to stop at certain spots, and then I wouldn't I wouldn't go over. So it's up to you, whatever you need practice in, or whatever whatever you feel is gonna be benefit you the more most. It's a, a nice practice to do any of the things. So there's that. Um, so you can do this with any, pretty much any color on your palette. And part of it is learning which pigments mix together, which make which kinds of different colors, right? So we know that the ultramarine blue and the cadmium yellow make this specific type of like an earth tone green. You're kind of looking at an earth tone green there. But if I were to mix, um, I don't know, let's see. We can try a Prussian blue, which is a really light blue. And put him over here. With our, uh, let's say, lemon yellow. Let's make it real bright. Two very bright colors. See what happens. I think we're going to get an earthy green again, or you think we're going to get something totally different? I'm thinking. I'm thinking neons is what I'm thinking. So let's find out. So we've got our Prussian blue and our lemon yellow. Just going to kind of mix a little bit of them together. And go through and see what that starts to look like. Definitely lighter than what we had going on before. No matter how much water I have on it, huh? But the green is definitely different. It's not earthy. Definitely getting some pretty colors, though. But you can see how different it can be, even though these are blue and green um, by all standards right we're still getting like completely different sets of colors than what we have up there so that's another reason why this is kind of important to do for each of your different palettes and I suppose you could also do this with um, acrylic or oil uh, if you wanted to see what that looks like uh, because it, it does do the same thing, right? Um, your different reds and your different yellows and your different greens are all going to blend differently. Um, you can also do this with your neutrals. Um, so like your browns and your, your whites and your grays. And you can do this with mixing like three colors together, right? So if I wanted, um, if I wanted to make a brown, I need to mix all three primary colors together. So maybe I pick one of these colors that I've already mixed um, in my my little ceramic dish or in my aluminum tin and I make a bunch of it and then I mix it in with the third color um, to make that brown and then I could have browns all the way across. Um, but it's a great exercise. It definitely helps you figure out what colors you've got going on. Um, just to give you an idea what a structure of it looks like. <gasps> Here it is. Um, kind of laid out. And you can see like as we, as we go along. Some of them were pretty rough looking. But as we go along my, my brush control gets better. I'm staying in the lines more. Um, my water control is different. They're or better. There's not as much cauliflowering as there were in previous pages. And here's a bunch of greens. And these are just all different colors that came from 
my different palettes. I mixed different palettes together. I had um, I had some colors that were in this palette that were not in my Daniel Smith palette. So I added those two together. So you can do that as well. But here's all my neutrals. Right, and there's a fun green and red exercise just to make some fun grays. Um, and some earthier tones from your burnt sienna and your browns. How, kind of how you get turquoise, teal. Um, and then more, more of those. So it's a, a fun way to build some skills and definitely is a relaxing way to, to spend a, a few minutes or an afternoon if you have the time. Uh, thank you for joining me for my mini course and I hope that you'll join me for some of our other watercolor courses that you can find in our group classes section. Um, if you have any ideas that you would like to see for one of our mini courses or even one of our our full courses, uh, please email me. Don't hesitate to contact me and let me know what those ideas are. I would love to um, I would love to accommodate them if I can. All right. Thanks for joining me. Um, have a wonderful day.